Markdown is a markup language that is widely used for note-taking, blog writing, and wikis. It's quick and easy to learn and easy to read. A major boon to Markdown has been its adoption by GitHub. GitHub offers GFM, or GitHub Flavored Markdown, to add features to address some of the shortcomings of Markdown, which only has a minimal feature set. The major advantage of Markdown, its simplicity, is also its greatest disadvantage. For a note-taking and blogging tool used almost exclusively by technical people, it lacks syntax highlighting. It is also only intended to be exported to HTML. Although there are many applications that support Markdown, such as blogging engines, static site generators, IDEs, and other text editors, there's no common standard among them. Markdown will often display differently on different platforms, mostly because the various platforms don't all support the same feature set. The most commonly used text formatting, italics and bold, are supported. Monospace text for tech keywords, for example, is also supported widely. A really handy feature is the ability to create bulleted lists simply. In addition, you can create numbered lists without having to renumber the items if you move elements around or add something to the middle of the list. The default way to add code is to put four blank spaces or a tab before each line. This causes the text block to be monospace and also prevents automatic line wrapping for long lines. Most third-party interpreters, including GitHub, support code fencing, which allows code to be entered at the same indent level as the rest of the text. Some parsers, including GitHub, allow you to add the name of the language when you use code fencing, which allows syntax highlighting. This works for many common languages and data types such as JSON. Since Markdown has its roots in HTML, you can, of course, add images. You can define tables using pipes and hyphens. You don't have to align the columns. They'll be displayed properly once it's rendered. The values in the columns can be right, left, or center justified. Use a colon on the left for left, on the right for right, and both to center it. Finally, checklists are a really nice feature. They're part of the extended Markdown feature set, so they're not supported everywhere, but they are supported on GitHub. ASCII doc is similar to Markdown. It's a simple markup language, and if you know Markdown, you will find replicating all of Markdown's functionality in ASCII doc to be simple. Most of the syntax is nearly identical. Just like Markdown, ASCII doc is intended to be simple to read and write in its plain text form. The major difference is that ASCII doc was created from the start to be used to publish to many different kinds of media, from HTML to ebooks. It also has a single specification unlike Markdown, 
which has almost as many parser implementations as there are parsers. In fact, major book publishers support ASCII doc for manuscripts, including O'Reilly. It also receives financial sponsorship from Okta. The only disadvantage of ASCII doc is that it doesn't have the name recognition of Markdown. You might think that it having many more features makes it more complicated and consider that a disadvantage, but it's not. You don't need to learn more than a handful of things to do most of what you want. You can do everything Markdown can do and more. And there will inevitably be something you want to do that feels like basic text editing and Markdown doesn't support it. Let's start with the basic text formatting. Like Markdown, ASCII doc has bold and italics, but it also has more features, and you can even create custom styles. Additional built-in styles include highlighting, underlining, and strike through. A very simple but useful feature is the ability to create asides like this note. This is often used in books to break up large blocks of text and emphasize important points. Having colorful icons by default really makes a document look more professional. Superscript and subscript is supported. Great for mathematical formulas or just writing H2O properly. A really nice feature is the ability to include other documents. You can use this to have every chapter of your book in a separate file, which keeps everything cleaner, especially in version control. Or you can reuse files like headers, footers, legal information, etc. We won't go into too many features of ASCII doc in this video, but here's just one more example of the visual elements it offers. A numbered list can be in Roman, Greek, or Arabic numerals. Here's something that will be exciting for anyone creating documentation about code. Instead of copy-pasting code samples into your document, why not include the actual code? This way. When your code changes, your documentation is automatically updated. Plus, if you run your code as part of your documentation creation process, you have two more extremely valuable tools. One, you know for a fact the code is valid. And two, you can capture the output and include that in your documentation. Here we see an optional title, count.py, above the source. This doesn't have to match the file name on disk. We could add annotations to any included text, including code, then add references in the text to explain them. Let's have a look at tables. The header is similar to Markdown, but entering each row is more readable in its plain text form. A really exciting feature is to create a table from a CSV file. Imagine having tables and code automatically updated each time you generate documentation. In addition to the pop-out sections like tips and notes, the sidebar feature provides a nice break to a wall of text. It gives you, as an author, the ability to create an ebook that looks professional. It can contain anything you'd put anywhere else in a document. 
In this example, we have another example of syntax highlighting. In addition to code, you can highlight data like JSON, YAML, and Docker files. There's special formatting for quotations as well. Standard Unicode emoji characters are properly rendered. Font Awesome has thousands of fonts commonly used all over the web, and they can be used in your documents. Common special characters such as copyright and trademark symbols are automatically converted. Adding a Q&A can help your readers review important points. Checklists have the same syntax as Markdown. Next is one of the most useful features for writing training documentation. You can create abbreviations and use them throughout your text. This is great for software and hardware products that have names that are long, difficult to spell, or have weird capitalization and punctuation. Now that this document is complete, let's have a look at the table of contents. This is automatically generated from the chapter and section headers. Finally, the index is created from any keywords in the document that are surrounded by double parentheses. So that's it. That's a quick comparison of Markdown and ASCII Doc, and I hope it's made you excited to start writing your documentation in ASCII Doc.